Gemfields is the world's leading colored gemstone mining and marketing company. We invest heavily in exploration, trying to identify the various colored gemstone deposits. We then, we bring in capital and we put a lot of science and technology into bringing these gems out of the ground. There are a lot of resources around the world where there's fascinating gemstones, but very little capital has been invested. And if you have a shallow deposit, it can be mined in a small scale way. But when you have a deep deposit, it eventually becomes more and more challenging to access. And this is where Gemfields really specializes. We are not only focused on colored gems, but we focused on bringing them out in a safe and sustainable way into the future. Gemfield's current mining operations is specifically in, in Africa. So we have the world's single largest producing emerald mine in Zambia. We produce about 20% of the world's known emerald supply. We also have the, uh, the largest producing amethyst mine. Amethyst is that purpley stone, also in Zambia. There we, we estimate to be producing between 30 and 40% of the world's amethyst supply. And in northern Mozambique, we've just recently acquired a fantastic ruby deposit. Undoubtedly has potential to be the greatest ruby deposit of all time. And we spent a lot of time trying to understand the resource, get it out the ground, develop our, our grading system for the rough for the rubies. And we took a lot of time. But at the auction, we were hoping it would go well, but the results were way beyond our, our best expectations. And if you think that in that mine, we'd invested almost 35 million to date, and we got 33 million back in the very first auction, from a pure numbers point of view, we were very pleased. The market was desperate for more supply, and the way we do the grading, and the way the, the, the people attending the auctions could see the material they wanted clearly, Historically, if you wanted a thousand stones of the same size, shape and color, it could take you five years to buy and collect that. Suddenly, you could see it in, on a table in front of you. And so we were really excited, but more important is our customers that attended were more excited. And the overriding message that we got at the end of the auction is when's the next one? We can't wait because on the basis of this, we believe that we can rebuild the ruby market to, to the same extent we've done with emeralds and possibly even better. We see as Gemfields a trend back to, to colour and a trend back to recognising that coloured gems are both a luxury item, something you can spoil yourself or spoil someone else with, you can showcase your individuality and it's a very good investment. So not only, and especially I'm talking now as a man, it gives you a little bit to, to uh, the chance to spoil someone special and to almost meet the needs of your ego because you can leave a legacy. It's something that you don't only give to a person today, but you leave as a, as a legacy for future generations. The face of Gemfields is Mila Kunis, a beautiful young American A-list superstar who I think perfectly showcases our brand in that she's, not, she's young, but she's not too young. Um, she's quirky, she's happy to be individual and that's the kind of company we are and it's what we believe our, our stones are. It was clear to the world we were a mining company that markets, those were the things we were, were focusing on, not too dissimilar to what De Beers did for diamonds throughout most of its life. And then all of a sudden we acquire Fabergé and people thought this was a little bit different, are you now a retail business? But the reason we did it was very easy, simple, number one, if you have to think of, in my opinion at least, the ultimate luxury brand of all time, it has to be Fabergé. It's a word when you go into the market and you mention that word to young people and or they say it back to you, there's almost a reverence, there's a respect, the way they say it, Fabergé. It's just got such a le great legacy and for us to have be associated with a brand of that global appreciation and respect is, is their absolute privilege. But more than that, Fabergé has been known for his artistry, known for his creativity, certainly something we as a company look to, to encourage. We felt that for a while people were, when you were buying art, you were celebrating the design and the artist. When you were buying clothing it was the same thing, but we felt for a while jewellery design had become very, if I can use that word, I've got to be careful, but boring, where it was all about the stone and it was as big a stone as possible, but the design and the way it was showcased, it was all the same. And I thought, that's fine, a great gemstone is fine, but let's not forget the artist, and let's not forget that creativity, and who better to showcase that than Fabergé? I believe we've come a long way in the year we've owned it. 
but we still have a very long way to go. But I'm a firm believer it's worth taking the time to get the foundations right, to make sure the basis is right before you build a house. And that's what we've done in the last 18 months. And all I say to people is watch this place because I think the consumers and the marketplace is going to be very pleased.